Um, she, it was tough conditions today. I think that she played the conditions better than I did um, in the stadium. It was quite windy, but then it like swirls a lot. So it was tough conditions. Um, I think I kind of found my bearings a little bit more in the second than the first. But she's just rock solid. Um, didn't really make a lot of unforced errors. Um, started serving better in the second set, putting pressure on me to have better service games. Um, wasn't getting as many free points on the return. So, I mean, she was just solid. And, you know, I think this is uncharted territory for me. My first Masters 1000 quarterfinal. Um, you know, she's been here before. For me, it was a new experience. Kind of went out a little bit tighter than I was in the last couple of days. So, you know, I'm just going to learn from it. Um, don't really have much time to process. I got to play tomorrow in Cincy. So, <laughs> I mean, it's cool that, you know, I'm able to kind of take the momentum that I have here and roll it into another event. So, you know, um, have to have short memory. Um, this is another tournament tomorrow. <laughs> Just can you take us through this week for you. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, I'm sure. Just what was it like, the emotions, you know, not sure if we're going to play and then yeah. the withdrawal and everything that's sort of gone on for you? Yeah, um, it's it's been crazy. It's been one of the crazier weeks for sure. Um, and people kept asking me, like, do you know who you play? I was like, guys, I didn't even look at the main draw. Like, because <laughs> I, once I lost in qualities, I was like, you know, I signed in for Lucky Loser, but you never know if you're going to get in or not. So I literally didn't even look at the draw. So I had no clue. Next day, next day, I had no idea. So, um, you know, I was just taking it a day at a time, a match at a time. And, um, you know, especially yesterday, it was crazy. Like, people thought I was lying. Like, when I told them, I was like, I arrived 11 minutes before I walked out on the court. Like, it was a true story. So, um, definitely didn't even have any time to, like, think about anything, process anything. I was like, oh, like, I got to get dressed. And, like, had the locker room girls make my drinks. And, like, I was like, I had all hands on deck. So, um, this week has been amazing. Um, you know, it's not anything shy of what I believe that I could do. I know that it's in my capability to, you know, capitalize on the opportunities that I have and play the tennis that I played and even better, you know, like I was a little disappointed in myself because I felt like I could have played better and had a better showing today. Um, but again, new experiences and I'm taking it and, you know, I know the things that I can do better and I'm going to take that into my match tomorrow. And again, like, I don't really have a lot of time to really sit and kind of like, think about it too much you know I got have to be on to the next thing which is you know a gift and a curse sometimes <laughs> but it's I view it as a gift because you know it gives me an opportunity to have a short-term memory look at all the positive things that happened over this week and then move on um and that can be hard sometimes with tennis players because we can kind of linger on things a lot so um you know I'm really thankful for the experiences I had a great time here didn't really get to explore the city very much. I didn't have a single meal outside of my hotel room, so maybe we'll do it today. But um, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm really pleased just with the progress and you know how things are trending. You don't need the mic, I can hear you. <laughs> it's a pretty good week for American tennis. I think there was five of you guys in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Can you just kind of talk about the depth in the US women's game right now and how you guys are all kind of pushing one another? Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's, um, it's a really special time you know, um, just to be able to kind of like have another resurgence of women's tennis. And, you know, for so many years, like it was Venus and Serena, you know, only and people trying to kind of chase, you know, the top. Um, so, you know, it, it's really nice to be able to have so many high level women inside the top five, 10, 20, 50, um, 100. You know, it's like it's very depth, very deep. And, you know, it's great because. You know, like you said, we always we all push each other. You know, it's really cool. Like, you know, um, I had never spoken to Emma really before Billie Jean King Cup this year in April. So like, and then from there, it was like one of the best weeks that I I've had. We had so much fun, such a great team atmosphere, such a great team environment, and so got a chance to really know her. You know, both on and off the court, and um, she's really truly like one of my favorite people out here. So, um, yeah, it's like it's. It's really fantastic. I'm I'm really happy to be a part of this um, and kind of like trailblazer, another way of being a mother and just kind of like doing things my way and my, on, on my own path. But, you know, to be a part of women's tennis as an American, I think is fantastic and, you know, super proud. Taylor, when you get into a draw as a lucky loser and then you start to go on a run like this, does it change your mentality at all? Or do you feel any different kind of pressure trying to take advantage of that second chance? 
No, it's like actually the opposite. I mean, maybe for other people it is pressure, but for me, it's like the opposite because you're not even supposed to be here. So, you know, for me, it's like, it's another chance, you know? So why not take advantage of it, you know? Um, and for me, how I entered, like how it happened getting Lucky Loser, whereas like I came here at eight o'clock in the morning, like I got here at 8.15, I signed in at 8.30 and I played not before five, and so it was like, I was here, I literally had like a 16 hour day on site. So for me, it was one of the things where just like, I'm just going to make the most of whatever. Like, I didn't even know if I was going to play or not. And then to know like, okay, I got in, but now I have eight hours before I play. <laughs> like, and it ended up raining that day too. So it was more of a delay. So, you know, it was like more mental management than anything. But, you know, for me, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to, I get another chance. All right, let's do it. And that's what was my mindset. Like, I didn't feel any pressure. I just knew that I was going to do better than I did the day before in my quality smash. And so the things that I felt like I could have did better or, you know, executed on, I was just going to take those learning lessons into the next match and see what happened. But I didn't put any additional pressure on myself to feel like I have to do this or that. When I do that, I honestly play so much worse. And I feel like that's what happened today in a way. Um, you know, I, didn't have expectations, but I think that like I wanted to play well and I played so well yesterday and like so free and, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit stifling in between the ears. So, um, you know, for me, that's again, it's one of the things that I'm taking as a learning lesson to say, hey, like, you know, you got to go out there and just take the moment for what it is and just enjoy it and, you know, not put any pressure on yourself. Um, no matter what the round is, whether it's first round, last round qualities, you know, lucky loser, whatever. And, you know, it's kind of the rare rarity of the sport. Um, you know, in the sports world, like how often do you have like a quarterfinal and then you go qualies of the, you know, the following week, like, it, you know, this is tennis is one of the few sports that that happens rolling into the a next event. So what I did this week, what I did today, you know, it doesn't matter tomorrow, quite literally, you know, so I'm just taking that mentality and um, keep pushing forward. Taylor, you showed a great mental toughness during the match. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering, do you have a routine where you prepare mentally before a match like this, or do you build it up match by match? Um, no, I, I kind of have a routine in terms of our preparation. Like I have, you know, my coach, we talk about strategy and kind of the things that I want to do on the court. Um, but in terms of the mental preparation, no, I mean – I just go out there and play. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think today, you know, sometimes the mind is, is crazy because other outside factors can influence how you feel or your thoughts or, or add an additional pressure or, you know, again, may go in with a little bit of expectation of like wanting or more hopes of playing well or at the same level or better. And, you know, that can sometimes make it worse, you know? So for us, we stay consistent with our routine in terms of preparation leading up to the match and, you know, strategy, tactics, and everything like that. So I'm going into the match very clear on what I want to do. Um, but then, you know, things happen once you get in between the lines. You know, you, start, you feel pressure. You may feel super free, relaxed, loose. You know, you know, things can always change. So for me, I try to be as fluid and as possible to be able to flow through that and, like, to understand, like, going out – the player that played in the first set was completely different than the player that played yesterday. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, like, you can't make a forehand today. Got it. Cool. This is what we're doing. Like, you know, so then having to work through that um, to be able to keep myself in the match and keep it competitive. So um, it's really important that, you know, for me personally, like, I just stay in that space of being able to continue to continuously adjust because, like, if I kind of get – fixated on one thing like it doesn't really work well so I just I know that for myself through experiences like it hasn't always been this way you know I'm very stubborn so I'm the kind of person I'll just keep going and you know until you know it breaks and some I've realized that that doesn't work so I have to be fluid and relax and just kind of like take things for as it as they are so um you know that's what I've learned and what works for me
Uh, Naomi spoke earlier in the week about some of the challenges she's, she's had since she's come back to tour mm-hmm. um, with regards to regaining her speed and straight through her core muscles. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of curious um, when you came back from your maternity leave, uh, if you countered kind of similar challenges physically. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you and Naomi have kind of shared a bond to kind of talk to each other about motherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we literally were texting yesterday. It was like we were long overdue for dinner and just like catch up conversation. Um, So we haven't really gotten a chance to like speak, you know, intimately about it. Um, When I saw her at Indian Wells, I congratulated her on coming back. And just that was the first time I had seen her. So I just told her like, hey, congrats on (laughs) coming back and being here because it's not easy at all. with so many different things as, you know, a new mother that you have to manage and externally and internally. Um, and for someone like Naomi that has had such success and, you know, is Grand Slam champion, multiple Grand Slam champion and coming back with pressure that I didn't have, like I can't, you know, I, I can't relate to her situation in that way. Um, but, you know, it was really cool to be able to see that she's so comfortable and, you know, in her skin and just where she is in life. And I think that that's the most important thing. Um, and in terms of like the physical, like we all, everyone has different, you know, challenges. You know, I look at Caroline, what was the acting? I'm like, shit, she just bounced right back. Like, bing, you know, back in action. Um, for me, my comeback was like, I, I had to take time. You know, I lost almost 90 pounds to come back and to play. Um, you know, breastfed my son for 10 months, you know, so it was like a lot of different changes in my body that I I had to go through. Um, And yeah, you know, even like this year, I traveled with a physio for the first time in my career and we've identified certain weak points and like I had to have a C-section. So like I have scar tissue in that area that causes your core to be weaker and like certain muscles like that, you know, don't fire or aren't turned on the same because of having to cut through all of those layers of fascia and tissue, you know? So um, we're working through those things. And it's kind of like one of the things where once it happens and you have that trauma, you just have to continuously like manage it. Um, It's never going to be like it didn't exist. So, you know, we can't say, oh, it's like, it's not going to be like it never happened. But I, I definitely am stronger in my core because of that. You know, it allowed us to be able to tailor certain things to, understanding those deep core muscles and focusing on that stuff because you have to because it's non-existent you know when you're pregnant and it all turns shit honestly so um um, you know for us like it's more of a at this stage you know we went through the strength building building and everything and now it's more of a management thing um but yeah you know it's one of the crazy things about that your body goes through and you know it's just part of it and you know we adjust but you know it's all kudos to her and everyone else and myself included for having to go through that and be able to come back and play on this level. Like it's not easy and, you know, it's not easily psychologically. It's not easily on your body. You know, it's not easy on your mind having to be away from your kids and, you know, choose yourself. You know, you have to be very selfish in the sport. So, um, yeah, I mean, as a mom, you know, I, I, give all praises and all kudos to everyone who's doing this because it's not easy. And, um, you know, it's a lot of sacrifices on top of the sacrifices that you already have to make as a professional athlete playing tennis and being in this world. So, um, you know, I just give all credit to her and, you know, everyone else doing it.